Okay, welcome to this next module. Now we are in uh, module 15, and we're going to be looking at this thing called multiple regression. Now, if you had, if you've watched any of the videos from module 14, this next section is going to be very, very similar. There's a lot of crossover between what we looked at in 14 uh, and this uh, module 15. So what we are, what we're going to do now is we're going to start again, as we did in 14, with a regression model. Now in module 14 we stopped with this. We had just one independent variable. Now we can allow as many independent variables as we want. So we can, let's just go out 2xp, and plus, of course, there's random error. So what we are doing now is we have some theory or we have some reason to believe that this dependent variable y can now somehow be explained or predicted by this set of independent variables. And again, it's not a perfect linear function. Uh, there's random variation that exists within there as well. So again, this is our regression model. The process here is the same. We take the expected value of this, b1 or beta1, x1 plus, on and on and on, beta pxp. So that gives us our regression equation. And this is the one that we want to estimate. So then we have our estimated regression equation, b0, b1, b2, and on and on and on for all of those. Uh, independent variables. So again, it's a very similar with module 14, but now we're just elaborating it, we're expanding it uh, into other, uh, it, to allow for other independent variables. The process, the methodology is, is the same. We are still employing this, what is called the least squares criterion. And so this is where we are minimizing the sum of squared errors. Oops. Our squared errors in that regression. Now, again, same as what we looked at in the simple linear regression. Basically, what we're doing is we're partitioning this variation that exists in our dependent variable. We're splitting it up into that uh, sorry, that which is d can be explained by the regression and that which is just random fluctuation, random variation uh, in that data set. So you may have recalled, if, you'd, if you've seen any of the previous videos, oh, that looks like a mess. What's going on there? <clears throat> in, in the module 14 exercise, where we had, uh, let's say we were just estimating this uh, simple linear case. So I had an x, uh, just one x and one y. So this is easy enough to draw. I can say, well, here's my dependent. It's a function of this one independent. And maybe this is what the scatter plot looks like of, of those observations. And we want to estimate this relationship, b0, b1, x1. And within that sample here we have whatever is that y bar, that average value uh, for the dependent variable. So when we look at this kind of splitting up this variation in that dependent variable, let me just take one observation. Let's take this one here. So this distance between an individual observation and y, uh, y bar if we take all of these differences and we add, and we square them and we add all of those up, those would all add up to give us this SST. Now we incorporate this additional piece of information into our regression and this allows us now to capture or predict um, some value for y, for the dependent variable. So this difference this is a y hat, so this difference between y hat and y bar, again, if we, add, if we square all those differences for all of these observations, add them up, that gives us SSR. And then, of course, this is what remains. Same idea, 
if we square those differences for every observation and add those up, that gives us SSE. So through this methodological approach, which we're not going to get into the derivations of the formulas uh, here, but we're minimizing our error. So if we're minimizing this term, this is a fixed value, fixed by the sample. So if we're minimizing this, we're therefore maximizing the extent to which we can capture the, re the, the variance in our dependent variable. So this sounds like a review of, of module 14, which really it is. Uh, what we're going to be doing now, I'm going to give myself some more space. Maybe this is going to get ugly again. Glitchy. Oops. Okay. What we're doing now is very similar, as I keep saying. Now if we have a model that looks like this, now let me just extend this with just one more independent uh, variable. So now we're going to be estimating two coef uh, three coefficients, b1 x1 plus b2 x2. So what is this going to look like? Well, when we were doing the simple linear regression, it was one independent variable. We are estimating a line, right? We are estimating this line in one two-dimensional space. When we go into a multiple regression, now I have one, two, three dimensions. So let me give myself lots of room here to try to draw this. So I use your imagination. My, my artistic abilities here are clearly limited. So now what we might have is something that looks like this. So here, this is y. This is my dependent variable. This is x1. This is x2. Now, just as we had, if I scroll up here, I had a y-intercept here, b0. Same thing here, somewhere along this y-axis, I have a y-intercept uh, of b0. Now, actually, I'm going to move it up that axis. It will make it a little bit easier to draw, I think. So here's b0. Then I have against x1. So if we just if we ignore that x2 dimension for just one second, and we just look at x1, well, I have here now we call this a partial slope uh, that explains the relationship between y and x1. So maybe that looks I don't know something like this. So this has a slope of b1. Then we have a similar uh, relationship or a similar notation when we look at x2. We have here this partial slope that explains the relationship between x2 and our dependent variable y. And maybe that looks something like this. So this has partial slope b2. So we have now a partial slope against both of our independent variables. And now if I just try to connect these dots a little bit. I don't know how that looks. Now we have, instead of a line in two-dimensional space, now we're, we're looking at a surface. This is kind of a surface here that exists here in three-dimensional space. So just as up here, we could use this regression, this estimated regression, for really two things. One, we could determine or, or analyze the marginal effect of a change in x on y, so we maybe we're just interested in the slope, what does that tell us? Or we could be interested in using it for prediction. By that I mean give me some value for x, x star, I can plug this into my estimated regression equation, and I can predict some estimated value for that dependent variable. Multiple regressions, the same thing. Maybe all I'm interested in is the marginal effects. So what is this, what is the impact of a small change in x1 on y or a small change in x2 on y? Or we can also use this for prediction. So now if you give me, let's change color here, give me some value for both x1 and x2. So now you have really a set of coordinates. And so now here I have a, a point on that x1, x2 plane. So this is a set of coordinates, x1 and x2. And then that comes up and maybe that connects, maybe that's sitting on the surface, that green surface somewhere around there. And then if we draw a line back 
to that y-axis, that gives us then our predicted value. So I don't know if my drawing really helps illustrate this, but <laughs> my artistic abilities here are limited, but I just want to show that it's very much the same thing. Now I can't draw this with any more independent variables because then I'm drawing a, a cube in four-dimensional space, and my goodness, if this is what my three-dimensional drawings look like, well, I don't pretty sure I can't draw a four-dimensional drawing. I need animation or something. Anyways, so the multiple regression is extraordinarily similar. We're just expanding now into the number of independent variables uh, that we're going to have, but otherwise, at, the, at its core, it's very much the same. Now, when I teach this course, uh, we don't have a lot of math prerequisites for uh, for the statistics, and so I can no, lo no longer provide a data set, a sample of data, and have students calculate these coefficients. In the same sense that with the simple linear regression, we had formulas for B1 and B0. Uh, for my course in, in statistics, now we don't have the math prerequisites. We need matrix algebra. So that limits the types of problems that we can do. So we're going to focus mostly on the, interpreting the results um, and, and reading the output from, uh, from Microsoft Excel and, and manipulating some of that information. So in any case, uh, that's where we're going to go. We'll look at uh, a little bit um, of different types of data. I'll, I'll incorporate a discussion on categorical variables, uh, so some non-numerical data as well. But basically, we're doing the same thing. Taking all of that variation in Y, and we're splitting it up. We're trying to explain it. We estimate these least squares parameters to try to explain that relationship. So without further ado, I think that's all I need to say for my intro. So let's get started on some problems. Thanks for watching.